Praise the Lord and praise the Lord and praise the Lord and praise the Lord. And oh, Jesus. You know, we, we, we come to our Bible study and we call for prayer. Let's just call for praise right now. Praise the Lord. 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 Oh, we praise you, Lord. Yes, we praise you, Lord. Yes, we praise you. We praise you again. We praise you again. And we praise you again. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Son Jesus, Son Jesus, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, I know there's a hunger here tonight and this wonderful outpouring of God's family. Only Monday night, rainy night as it is, but uh, you're here and you're here because you're hungry as I am for the Word of God Hallelujah. and for the things the Scriptures can spur us toward. And uh, when we hear these things, we rejoice, uh, discussing here Sister Jean and Brother Daniel the significance of the, uh, the Feast of the, of the uh, Trumpets and uh, the uh, time of Israel and the strategic place that uh, the blood moons that are pictured in the scriptures, the lining up of them on the 21st, 22nd, 23rd of September, the Feast of the Trumpets, and the uh, picture, the, the woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, the crown of the stars upon her head, and the eighth day, and unto him the gathering of the people, and the day of circumcision, and all these things are so uplifting and stirring our mind and our heart uh, that we just keep uh, receiving more of the Word of God and we study more of the Word of God and we receive more of the Word of God. Hallelujah. And that's what we're going to do tonight is to just have our minds and our hearts open. It's a class and uh, open for comments, open for input, uh, open for uh, further learning by us all. and. Um, because this is the day, this is the day the Lord hath made. Yes, it is. And it is the eighth day. That, that you know, uh, someone, uh, someone said, uh, but God only made seven days. No, no, that's where you're wrong. He made eight days. Yes. And when you see the eighth day, that's the revelation of all. Yes. That's the revelation of all. Yes. That is the day. That is the day. We are now looking right into Glory. the day, the eighth day, yes, uh, the day of circumcision. That's when circumcision took place, oh, on the eighth day. Yeah. Couldn't take place on the, uh, any other day. They had, God had to give Moses an eighth day, yeah. and Moses gave it to the people. And on the eighth day, mm -hmm. the child, the male child was circumcised. Uh, so uh, we see that, and see this is the day uh, Paul spoke of it in uh, Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, so many chapters. Uh, but that day, that day, he said, that day, yes. that day shall not come until the man of sin there be first a falling away. Yes. Well, that's been fulfilled. Two thousand years of the church falling, 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 falling yes. away, and the man of sin being revealed, and he is being revealed now. Uh, so that day can come now, but that day shall not come. And the, the day coming as a thief in the night, yeah. uh, First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, uh, Paul said he didn't want them to be ignorant concerning the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord, so cometh as a thief in the night. Yeah. And uh, why is it? Because no one is looking for the thief. No one knows where the thief is going to come. Uh, that depicts the picture of Christ and the second advent and him coming again. Uh, so the day of the Lord is a precious day. And then that ancient prophecy uh, concerning, uh, you know, the scepter, not the, the departing from Judah or the lawgiver from between his feet. Uh, 
uh, you see, uh, until Shiloh would come, until Shiloh would come. And we know who Shiloh is. And under him, the prophecy was, and that was in the time of Jacob and the sons. Yes. Under him shall the gathering, yes. under him shall the gathering yes. of the people be. Yes. And we know that gathering uh, it certainly is more than just a Jew or just a Gentile because that's not the gathering of all of his people. No, he, he broke the middle wall of partition down that's right. and he included the Gentile. Yes who was the wild olive branch, yes. drafted in contrary to nature. Uh, but because of that, uh, now unto him the gathering of, and Paul said in uh, that uh, chapter in Ephesians, uh, the second chapter, he said, but now then, since the middle wall of partition is broken down and we reconcile one in Christ, he said, now therefore you're no more strangers the Gentile was a stranger. If the yeah. Gentile journeyed with an Israelite, the, Gen the Israelite was the child of God and the Gentile was a stranger. But he said, no more, you're now then, you're no more. And he was writing to a Gentile church. He said, no, now they, therefore you're no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens yeah. with the saints and of the household of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be a fellow citizen tonight. Yes. Glad to be a fellow citizen. Yes. I, I couldn't be under the law. I had to be a stranger. Yes. Uh, but now I, I, I'm a fellow citizen under grace. Yes. And we're built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. You know, the whole building is fitly framed together, and then we grow into a holy temple. Jew and Gentile, we grow into a holy temple in the Lord. And we're seeing that now in our day. Uh, I, I wrote just a little, I was looking at an article I wrote back in 1997. I'm just gonna read a, a paragraph for a little magazine I put out then, The Good News. And uh, how could anyone uh, the, the title was The Man of Galilee. How could anyone not love this man of Galilee? Many, many have loved him enough to die rather than to deny him. For what reason? Jesus came to this earth as the God-man, both man and God in one person. He was both man and God yes. in one person. He had, he both, he both had the power that belongs only to deity, and yet he had a human form that felt hunger, weariness, cold, so on. You would have thought after Jesus used his power to make water uh, and to wine his first miracle, the religious element of his day would have heeded John the Baptist's admonitions, Matthew 3 and 2, as well as Christ's admonitions, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, Matthew 4 and 17. Turning water to wine was significant in that it showed he not only had the power to change the elements of the water and make it wine, but he had the power to age this wine. Not only just change it, but age it. Uh, the ruler of the Good. Uh, Good. Of the wedding feast said, you have kept the best wine until now. Right. And the best wine was the aged wine. Yes. Yes. He not only turned that water into wine, but he aged the wine. Yes. Praise yes. God. <laughs> we were in, the, in the, the Cana when that he performed a miracle. Yes. And uh, they have a, a, a wine story that says the, the wine store of the first miracle. Is that right? Yes. I didn't get when, to see that when I was we there. we went in there, I bought four bottles of uh, uh, yep. wine there, mm -hmm. and that was uh, pomegranate wine. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I brought it over and I gave some away, you know. <laughs> but that was, that was very expensive. The very, it was the pomegranate I would think so. wine was $65 a bottle. Oh, my. <laughs> well, the wine that he, that he uh, served them that day, 
It couldn't be bought, could it? No. no. It couldn't no be bought. Price on that one. And it couldn't be bottled. It was a, it was a miraculous wine uh, of our Savior's uh, miracle. Amen. Uh, that uh, you have kept the best wine till now. Yeah. That that means it was as if it had aged at the least several years. He had just shown them that he had the power to lift the curse that was put upon the earth when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, and had the power to establish the kingdom of God upon this earth. He also raised Jairus' daughter yeah. from the dead as well, uh, as Lazarus, proving he had power to raise all the worthies who had already gone on. So when we talk about resurrection, uh, we have the proof that Christ did it while he was on the earth. Right. So he certainly can do it at the right hand of the Father. Yeah. He can, if he raised the dead then, he can raise them now at the right hand Absolutely. of the Father. And so uh, he, he had power to raise all the worthies. You're going on just a bit more of this, and I'll stop this. Uh, Luke at 8, 54, 55, John 11, 43, 44, he had the power on this earth to establish the kingdom, but he was rejected by the intelligentsia of his day. The God-man just didn't fit into the scribes and Pharisees' agenda. This was the Son of God. And he just did not think like the religious leaders of his day. He was what we might term as radical. I would think so. Yeah. And and so I wanted to read that little article. We had it several years ago, published it, and there's more to it. But uh, I thank God that I know this Jesus, and I know him in the sense of knowing him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. Uh, let's look at the burnt offering tonight a little bit. Um, in Exodus, the 29th, 38th and 39th verse, um, under the law of Moses, the Lord required a burnt offering, sacrifice of a lamb to be offered um, in the morning and evening continually. Um, this is a, a picture to us today of the church of the early and the latter rain uh, in the two offerings that God designed. Um, and, uh, and then we'll go to James and, and look at that, uh, what James said. But in Exodus, uh, the 29th chapter, uh, this, this law was given to Mo Moses. Moses gave it uh, to the priesthood of Israel, uh, Aaron, his five sons, and the Levitical uh, priesthood uh, in, in Exodus 29 I have it here coming on to it in a moment I'll get it and uh, we'll read it and we'll digest it uh, through the, let's try the 38th verse and 39th verse or so and um, we, we got it here uh, okay in, uh, and it shall be Aaron's and his sons by, well, let me start the 27th verse. Um, I don't know, let's see, I, we, yeah, we'll start the 27th. And thou shalt sanctify the breast of the wave offering, so dealing with the wave offering, and the shoulder of the heave offering, which is waved and which is heaved up of the ram of the consecration, even of that which is for Aaron and of that which is for his son. And it shall be Aaron's and his sons by a statue forever from the children of Israel, for it is a heave offering. And it shall be a heave offering from the children of Israel of the sacrifice of their peace offerings, even their heave offering unto the Lord. I see a picture of the heave offering because that was a wave offering. That was an offering they heaved. They literally physically heaved it, let it go. Yeah. Um, and uh, into the fire. And I see that as uh, a picture of our various offerings to the Lord in praise. Um, see, uh, we, we're doing that because, as I said last night, because of peace. We have peace. Yeah. When we have peace, that's an offering to the Lord. That That's one of the fruits of the Spirit. That That's one of the fruits that comes from the 
fruit of the Spirit, love, that's one of the multiplied fruits, uh, peace, long-suffering. Yes. And if, if the church would check itself right now yes. uh, and see, do they have peace? See, if they don't, they can't offer a heave offering, a wave offering to the Lord, heaving themselves, uh, caterpillaring themselves, throwing themselves, presenting their body a living sacrifice, holy and except from Romans 12. Um, but that, that's because God gave Israel peace and they were to show him that they appreciated that peace through the priesthood offering uh, this shoulder uh, and, and, and the um, uh, but wave is called a consecration. The ram of Aaron in 20, verse 26, the ram of Aaron's consecration and, and wave it for a wave offering before the Lord. And they would offer the breast and they would offer the shoulder. And I believe that uh, when God uh, takes that which is in our being, our bosom, uh, it comes from our bosom. That's the breast offering. And see, we worship God in spirit and in truth. Yes. See, we worship God in spirit and in truth. Uh, when, when the offering is given of, of the breast, that's what lies within your spirit and your heart while you're worshiping. This goes on while we're worshiping. See, a lot of people don't know, they don't understand that the moment you begin to worship, that worship will not do you any good if you're carnal. You have to be lost in the spirit. You have to go, they that worship God, see, he's giving them a law here to worship in Israel. Yeah. Uh, and, but here, Jesus said, woman, believe me, the hour is coming now is when they that worship God must worship him. See, that that moved past yeah. the wilderness of the, of the, of the church. And, and right now, we've got a carnal church that is work collectively, I'm speaking collectively. Right. We have a carnal church age that's using everything in the world to try to say this is worship. But they're carnal. They're sold under sin, many of them. And the church is to move out of that and move into the Spirit of God and be conscious about it. If there's 20 of us here in, in the church that will move away from the carnal part, if there's 50, if there's 10, God would have saved Sodom if there had been ten righteous in it. Would he not? Yeah. Uh, you know, if, uh, if, if, if they could have found ten. Right. Abraham, if he could have found ten, uh, God would have saved Sodom. Yeah. But whatever the number is, see, we're taking the law now, and we're seeing a picture. Uh, Hebrews 10 and 1 said, The law having a shadow of good things to come. Yeah. See, it was a shadow. It wasn't the sun. It was the shadow of the sun. Yeah. The son was reflecting himself through the law before he came as God-man in the flesh. And he wasn't a reflection when he came from the womb of the virgin. He was God incarnate. He was God in the flesh, the son of God. And he wasn't a shadow. He wasn't a reflection. But here under the law, they had to have a reflection. Uh, that's all they could see. They couldn't see the son they could see the shadow. And and here you said, you take this breast offering, and then you take the shoulder. The shoulder is strength. The shoulder is strength. Uh, the strength that I have, that God gives me, I must not use it on the flesh to satisfy the desires of my flesh and make me proud, arrogant, haughty. Um, I must take that strength and, and offer it to the Lord as I offer what's in my spirit. See, when I'm offering what's in my spirit, my strength must go toward him. Everything I have, worship him in the dance, worship him uh, in, in the, with the cymbals, worship him uh, with the instruments of praise. Uh, the 150th Psalm said, uh, praise him in the dance, uh, praise him with a 10 string yeah. instrument, uh, praise him with a cymbal, praise, praise him with a trumpet. Any strength I have, must go toward offering God uh, the proper offering. See, they did it back there with a ram. They did it with a wave offering. Well, I'm going to do it with my body yes. because my body now takes the place of that uh, 
offering of that ram. Yes. Uh, because uh, that, that that was fulfilled under the law. Only an exception. And and here's a, this picture is beautiful here. When you when you take it apart and you go into it, and he said that the children of Israel, verse uh, twenty eight, uh, in this uh, in, of the sacrifice of their peace offerings, even their heave offering unto the Lord. And as the holy garments of Aaron shall be for his sons after him to be anointed therein and to be consecrated in them. And we know that Aaron had five sons. Yes. And we know that Aaron was the high priest. He was chosen for that. Well, that was the law. But now that was a shadow, not of Aaron, but Melchizedek, yes. the order of Melchizedek, which supplanted the order of Aaron uh, because the order of Melchizedek uh, is um, under grace. Uh, th that, that priesthood came through Jesus Christ. Right. And he was the high priest. He is the high priest. Yes. But he has five sons. Yes. He has the apostle. He has a prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Yes. Um, you see, those five office workers, they reproduce the sons of the priesthood. They, they become the sons of of the priesthood, yes. and Christ is our high priest. Yes. And the holy garments that were to be anointed of those of those sons, and the holy garments of Aaron shall be his sons after him, after him. Praise God. Yes. You know, that, Brother Daniel. That uh, five has a meaning because five is a number of grace. Yes, it is. So it's the five stones that David took out of the, yes. of the creek. So this five is so much meaning. In the, in the fifth letter of alphabet in Hebrew is He. So the, the, the name for God is Yahweh, which is Yud He, Vav He. So he says that hand uh, of grace, nailed in grace, yes. that is Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Uh, see, um, and five uh, even is uh, God did not allow the name Jesus to be six letters. That's right. He called, he called it five. J E S U S. Five. F A I T H. Faith. Uh, faith uh, is the substance of things hoped for, yes. the evidence of things not seen. Yes. <laughs> Praise our God. Therefore, being justified by faith. Yes. Uh, Romans 5. Yes. Uh, so, you know, the, the Word of God is iron sharpening iron. Every bit of it. You can't do away with the Old Testament. You can't do away with the New Testament because it's all the holy book. It's the book. It's the book of life. Uh, you find life in it. And and uh, that's why Jesus said in is it John, the fifth chapter, where he said, but search the scriptures. But search the scriptures. Well, they didn't have what we have. They, they, they had the, the law. They had the Torah. Uh, they, they had the uh, Pentateuch. They, they had the, the, the books of the law, uh, but we, we, they didn't have the writings of Paul, James, Peter, John. Uh, we have that added, supplementing see, our grace. And the five books of the law also. And the five books of the law, they had that. Uh, but, but he said, you search them, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. Well, I'm gonna add this right here. We've got the rest of it now completed in the holy book that yes. we believe and I know is the Biblos, the Bible, yes. the yes. Word of God. Yes. But uh, could we not be guilty too of searching the scriptures? Yes. Well, what did he mean by that? He didn't mean that eternal life was not in the law because the law showed eternal life. Yes, they, they, they didn't attain to it. Uh, they fell short of it. Uh, they were not mixed with faith. They, they didn't receive that law mixed with faith. Now, we receive it mixed with faith, and uh, they could have searched those scriptures, and they could have found eternal life through the resurrection. Because when Christ came, he said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Uh, uh, though they died in the law, these all died. Hebrews 11 said, these all died, not having received the promise, but were persuaded of the things to come. But did you know why they didn't attain to life? And Jesus said, you search the scriptures because in them you think you have eternal life? Because they were blinded. They were blinded by the law 
as well as the law being uh, uh, able to help them. Uh, they could have died in the faith, as Hebrews 11 said, and attained to a better resurrection. That's why he said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. I like this 29th verse, and the holy garments of Aaron shall be his sons. So when I'm standing here and God anoints me in one of those five uh, anointings, one of those five faith offerings, uh, one of the, in, in the Melchizedek priesthood, I know that the holy garments came from my high priest. Amen. The holy anointing yes. came from my high priest. Amen. So I can't be proud. I can't take any glory. I can't say it's me. If God uses me, I know where the anointing comes from. Yes. I know where the anointing comes from. Uh, Aaron's sons uh, could not take any glory no. because the glory came from the holy Amen. garments Amen. of the high priest right. passed on down to them. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, we have to give him the praise. We can't say it's us. It's him. It's him. Praise God. Uh, whatever good there is in me, it's him. Whatever anointing there is, it comes from the holy garments. Yeah. comes from the anointing. And so he goes on here to say, and, and verse 30, and that, and that son that is priest in his stead shall put them on seven days. Seven is perfection. Seven is the days of perfection. When he cometh unto the tabernacle of the congregation to minister in the holy place, and thou shalt take the ram of the consecration and see his flesh in the holy place. The holy. Uh, just let his flesh uh, be melted away, right. seethed in a boiling uh, pot of burning, uh, and, and uh, the fire burning, uh, consuming him, seethed, consuming him um, in the holy place. And Aaron and his sons shall eat the flesh of the ram, that is, they were consecrated, and the bread that is in the basket, the word of God must be eaten as it was showed them the bread by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. See, that's the entrance into the uh, in, into the uh, tabernacle. The door of the tabernacle was out there in the courts. And, and then the door of the tabernacle itself uh, going into the holy place, that priest, uh, the, they said, uh, look how particular God was. And they shall... Uh, and, and they shall eat those things where, where the, atone, uh, the atonement was made to consecrate and to sanctify them. But a stranger, but a stranger shall not eat thereof. Well, yeah. now I can eat of that bread. Yes. And I can eat of that bread. No longer a Thank you, Lord. you can't deny me that bread. Right. I can't deny you that bread right. because in Christ now it is not any longer Jew nor Greek, bond or free, yeah, that's right. male or female, that's right. because all of that's broken down. That, that partition is broken down. The veil is rent. Praise God. It was rent. Yeah. When Christ was crucified on the cross and he died and the earthquake came and the temple shook and the veil of the temple was rent in twain. Praise God. From that time on, he hollered out on the cross, it is finished. Praise God. No man, no ordinance of ritualism or dogmatism can now keep us from eating the holy bread. Amen. Praise, Amen. The Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I can eat the holy bread. I'm blessed to the Lord. I'm not a stranger any longer. Praise God. What a picture that is there. And they shall eat those things where the atonement was made to consecrate and to sanctify them, but a stranger shall not eat thereof, because they are holy. And if all of the flesh of the consecration or of the bread remain until the morning, then thou shalt burn the remainder with fire. And that's 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 the commemoration of the Passover. Praise God. Uh, that lamb had to be eaten, and if they couldn't eat it in one house, they had to diligently search their neighbor out and bring their neighbor in. You know, that's another picture for the church yeah. right now. We cannot sit behind these four walls and say, I'm going to munch on my little part of the lamb. Right. I'm just going to sit here in my little corner. I'm going to believe what I want to believe. 
and nobody's going to change it. Nobody's going to tell me more. Nobody's going to add to. I'm going to eat my little bread, uh, eat my little part of the uh, Passover, the, the, the uh, Passover meal. Uh, no, and, and um, I can't eat anymore. I'm full. Well, the reason that we're not going to do that is because we have an ordinance of God in type and shadow to call our neighbor in. To get our neighbor involved. Yeah. Our neighbor is our brother. Our neighbor is our sister in Christ. Call them in. Right. The wall's down. Yes. I can't stay away from you because uh, you say, but I don't see that just like you. You don't see it like I do. That's well, right. look, if I let that be in fact, then we'll never be together. Yes. Right. We must strive. We must endeavor. Yes. We, we must strive to be one body. One body. One bread. Yes. One lump. When Jesus comes again, he's not coming for a scattered, divided church. No, he's, he's coming for one body, yes. one bread, yes. one lump. Praise the name of the Lord. Lord. Bone of each other's bone. Yes. Flesh of each other's flesh. Lord. Oh, yes, I see that. Praise God. Praise God. And then he said in verse 35, And thus shalt thou do unto Aaron and to his sons, According to all the things which I have commanded thee seven days, shalt thou consecrate them, and thou shalt offer every day a bullock for a sin offering, for atonement, and thou shalt cleanse the altar when thou hast made an atonement for it, and thou shalt anoint it to sanctify it. See, we're not going to get away. We're not going to get away with a lot of loose stuff in the church right now. God's going to bring it to a halt. God's going to bring it to a halt. God's going to put the church in divine order, yes. in divine function. Yes. Um, I'm searching right now, Lord, consecrate me with a, with a ram of consecration. Yes. Let me take the shoulder. Let me take the breast. Yes. Let me take and eat the whole Passover. Uh, Lord, don't, don't let me be foolish and look around yes. and refuse to hear, to see, to feel. But Lord, let me find the truth, keep the truth, mm -hmm and let the truth sanctify me yes. and set me apart. Amen. Praise the name Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Don't you feel that way? Don't you feel that way? Amen. I feel that way. That's why I can't join the crowd that no. just wants to play church. No. Come on. The children of Israel sat down to eat and drink and they rose up to play. I can't be a part of that. No. I, I just can't. My spirit tells me that I must find people that want to consecrate every day seven days yes. because the seven days are complete in perfection and when we complete the seven days that day yes. that day yes. the eighth day yes. is going to burst upon us Amen. praise our God my Lord, my Lord. <laughs> well praise God Glory. seven days thou shalt make an atonement for the altar and sanctify it and it shall be an altar most holy Whatsoever toucheth the altar shall be holy. Yes. Now this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar. Now this is after seven days. This is the day now. And he said there's two offerings that now you're going to offer. You've sanctified yourself. You've taken the heave offering. You've taken the shoulder, the breast. You're complete. The atonement's been made. The holy garments are on. And uh, he said, now look, in verse 38, now this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar, two lambs of the first year, day by day continually. The day of the one lamb of the first year, yes. the next day, the following day, the, uh, the other lamb of the first year. The one lamb thou shalt offer in the morning. morning. Well, that lamb was offered. Yes. That one lamb has been offered. Yes. Amen. That's why there's one day that remains for the two offerings of the burnt offering because the burnt offering is the complete annihilation of the flesh yes. of the animal. Yes. Praise our God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. And I believe yes. that God yes. wants a complete flesh annihilated. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, 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 and acceptable unto the Lord, 
which is your reasonable service. And don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. My God, that's what's happening to my mind right now. I'm being transformed. And as my mind is being transformed, if you know, you can't transform this body without you first let God transform this mind. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ. Your mind has to be transformed. A lot of people are trying to do, I, I watch people come sometimes over and over, and I see as a pastor that they'll come over and over and throw themselves down here for prayer. Did you know, until they let Jesus take their mind, and the body it doesn't matter. No. Let him have the mind. Yes. He will keep him in perfect peace. Said Isaiah 30 and 26, he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon the Lord. Praise God. You know what that makes you? That makes you a fanatic. That makes you a peculiar person. That makes you different when your mind is stayed upon the Lord. When I was 17 years old, I got Brother Daniel Stalt here. I want to toss this in here. When I was 17 years old, um, I had a, I had a, a, a county that I just didn't feel good. And so... Um, uh, my uh, uh, my uh, uh, pastor, uh, Brother Roberts, my foster father, he took me to Dr. Winslow here, a prominent doctor that's now gone on. I uh, used to make house calls here, Dr. Winslow. Yes. And I went up to see him in his office. And he talked to me and he examined me. And apparently he couldn't find anything wrong with me. Uh, and, and so finally he said, son, I think you're too religious. <laughs> Now, here's a doctor. He couldn't find anything wrong with me. He just said, I think you're too religious. He said, you go to church how many times a week? You play in a church orchestra? You go down to a city called Fort Myers and minister? They've got you under tents preaching? Um, you're in church. Uh, then we had church Tuesday night, uh, Thursday night, Saturday night. Uh, in Sarasota on Sunday morning, back here on Sunday afternoon, and Sunday night. Yeah. And he said, you are too involved in religion. <laughs> he said, son, get out and let the wind blow through your hair. Praise the Lord. I said, what do you mean, wind blow through my hair? He said, well, you just go out and have yourself a good time, and you, you do whatever you want to do. Oh, uh, and I walked out of that doctor's office, and I said, hey, they, don't, they can't help me. <laughs> I, but I, I'm all right. Praise God. He yeah. found me healthy, wealthy, and wise. Yeah. <laughs> when I went out of there, I was healthy, wealthy, and wise. Yeah. He didn't. He couldn't diagnose me. Praise God. I knew that religion was only letting me. Uh, uh, my faith, not religion, was only letting me come uh, close to the Lord. Brother Daniel, how'd you thought? Uh, you know, as he was talking about eating the bread. Why did Jesus say, I'm the bread of life? So we need to stay in this word, not just eating, but we need to, cons you know, consume this. Food. Consume it. We need to eat the whole stay Passover. with the book all the time, with the Bible, because this is all Jesus in here. Every page you turn, you'll find him in here. In the Old Testament. Said. And what did he say when he was at, uh, met the woman at the well? And uh, they said they brought the food. He said, I have food that you don't know about. That's what he said. He said that. And she didn't know about it. No. Uh, she was a Samaritan. She didn't know what he had to offer her. Uh, no, uh, the Passover was to be eaten, was it not? Absolutely. The Passover was to be eaten. Yes. Then Jesus transfers himself as the Passover lamb, yes. if, if they could have seen it, Peter as he Hoover. took the Old Testament and they opened their eyes, he didn't need the New Testament. He just went from the Old to the New, yes. and he said, except you eat, I am, I am the bread of life. Yes. Your right. fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, and they're dead. Yeah. Right. But he yeah. said, but I am the living bread yeah. that has come down from heaven. Yeah. He said, except a man eat my flesh. Yeah and drink, now there, there he transferred himself from the manna to the lamb. Yeah. He transferred himself from the manna, see your fathers are dead, they didn't eat the manna in the wilderness, yeah. but he said, except you eat my flesh, 
Uh, the, the, the manna was not flesh, but the lamb was flesh. And he transferred himself uh, from the manna, uh, showing he was the bread, but he transferred himself to the lamb, the Passover lamb, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. Uh, what a wonderful picture uh, that he gave there. Oh, it's true. Uh, finish up a verse or so and we'll go from there and I'll, I'll open up for any comments or questions uh, before we go into another area. Uh, now this is that, verse 38, which thou shalt offer upon the altar two lambs of the first year, day by day continue. Remember this is the burnt offering. The one lamb thou shalt offer in the morning. That lamb was offered. That lamb was offered. Jesus Christ was the morning sacrifice. Yes, he was. He was the Lamb of God. He was the Passover Lamb. He fulfilled the morning sacrifice. Now, there must be an evening sacrifice. Yes. yes. Now, Christ is not going to be offered again. He was offered once. Right. Hebrews said he was offered once. Right. He is going to be offered again. But who's going to be offered this time? We are now to become the burnt offering in the evening sacrifice. We are to be consecrated yes. and anybody that's serving God that's not willing to give up anything you have to give up, move away from anything that's hindering you, keeping you, not giving you faith, not letting you trust God, uh, anything, it doesn't matter what it is. If you cannot be the burnt offering of the evening sacrifice, God is going to offer the church, the church, as the offering in the evening time of the evening sacrifice. Wow. Uh, that, because uh, the evening sacrifice now is upon us. We are not going to have a lot of days to wonder if Christ is coming. Mm -hmm. We're not going to have a lot of time to wonder if this is the end of the age. It is. It is. Read the scriptures. Yes. Yes, Compare the old to the new. Yes, Lord. Know that this is the burnt sacrifice of the evening yes. fulfilling the two offerings because we're in the evening time and it will not be uh, get past the evening of the dark until Christ comes. Christ must come yes. and light up the world yes. as he did 2,000 years ago. Yes. Praise God. Amen. This yes. is a beautiful picture here of these two uh, sacrifices. There was a scripture come to me and I'll, I'll move away from this but I want to be sure and check it out. Uh, if, I'm going to go over to Hebrews. That's where it came in my mind. I don't know if it fits or not. It may not fit, but I want to look at it closely before I leave this uh, thought of the evening sacrifice. But in Hebrews 13, uh, just hit me. I want to be sure. Um, you said, um, no, Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, um, let me, I believe it is. Let's go back to 12. Yes. Hebrews 12, um, verse 17 um, of the 12th chapter, for you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, and he's talking about um, um, the, the Esau here, uh, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. He was a profane person. Hebrews 11th chapter calls him a profane person. Yes, sir. Uh, worthless. The word profane is worthless. He, he, he couldn't repent because he was worthless. Yes, sir. For you're not come. Now, this is what struck my mind. Yeah, sure it is. For you're not come unto the mount that might be touched. See, that might be touched. See, the Mount Sinai, they were told to stay away from it and not to run up to Moses and touch the mountain. Well, the mount that we have now is not Mount Sinai. No, it's not. We have the Mount Zion. Yes. yes we we are now have the Mount Zion. Yes. We we are children that are now looking at the Mount Zion. Yes. Not Mount Sinai. Uh, Galatians four said that was a picture of the law. Yes. Praise God. But now we are looking at Mount si Mount the, the Zion. Mount Zion, and He said, "For you're not coming to the mount that might be touched." and that burn with fire, nor into blackness and darkness and tempest. That was Mount Sinai. That was the law. Darkness, burn with fire. 
and the sound of a trumpet uh, under the law and the voice of words at Sinai, which once, uh, which voice they, they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them yeah. anymore, for they could not endure. Yes. Yes. That's what I wanted right there. Right for there. they could not endure. Yes. But Jesus said, he that endureth, he that endureth yes. unto the end yes. shall be saved. Yes. But he said, they could not endure. Mm -hmm. My God. Hallelujah. My God. Oh, I want to endure. I want to endure. I can't endure. Yes. You can't endure. Yes. I don't care what the enemy throws at you. Lord. You can endure it. Yes, I don't care what the enemy says to you. You can, you can endure. endure it. Yes, you can. I don't care how the enemy comes to you. You can endure it. Yes. I believe God has a people Israel of God of today, Israel of God of today, yes. Jew and Gentile, that are going to endure. Amen. Praise our God. I believe. Yes. Praise our God. For they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with the dark. And so ter terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Now, verse 22. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you say you felt goosebumps on? Uh, yes, earlier I did. But I love that the big words that change scripture are two letter or three letter words. There was no but, strength the but, but, by, but God, or, or if, or on, or in. I yes. mean, it makes so much difference to the scripture. Yes. Those little tiny little words. So they do, don't us, they? None of us are, are too minor. None of us are too small. Every one of us are an important part to God's plan. There are no ma in music, there's majors and minors. Yes. yes. But in the church, there are no majors, no majors. and there are no minors. No. We're one body in yes. Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name. I said we're one body yes. in Christ. There are no minors, there's no majors. We're one body in Christ. Yes. And he said, but and now verse 22, but you are come, but you are come in the evening sacrifice, in the evening time, but you are come unto the Mount of Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company. <laughs> Oh, my God, I can feel them around here right now. Praise God. I can feel them around here right now. Yes. An innumerable company. Yes. Don't worry about God running out of angels no. to fill the church, to be with you, to keep that car from crashing into you, to take the fever out of your body, to give you the miracle you need. He has angels he can dispatch day and night. The angel of the Lord encamps, encamps. And camps. That means he stays and camps around about them that fear him. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise our God. Amen. Amen. Oh my, I believe someone's in this room with us right now. I can, I can feel the presence of an angel in this room. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't worry about being out from under the shadow of his wing. Don't worry about him leaving you. Don't worry about you running out of protection. God, God will not forsake his own. No. Praise God. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And when he can't be there, he can dispatch an angel. Be there with you. Thank you, Lord. We all just give that and praise the Lord for me. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Oh, your presence is coming back again. Your glory is coming back again. Yes. We're, we're ready, Lord. We're ready for it. Yes. This is the day the Lord hath made. Yes. We're going to rejoice in it and be glad. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We are ready for it, Lord. We care not about our earthly lives. They are done and said. They are past. We are a new creation. 
If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Praise our God. Praise our God. Praise our God. I care not about this life anymore. It's just because I'm here, I have to live it. I have to be here. But my mind is set. My eyes are set on the Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. Praise our God. We are not alive anymore. He says, we'll be crucified with Christ. Crucified. But, I live, but not I, but the Christ that lives in me. Oh, Brother Daniel, that's so, right. I, I mean, why should I worry about it? I am not this life that I have. This is nothing. It's Christ that lives in me. I'm such a temporary dead. life I have. Yeah. Three score and ten. And if by reason and strength you continue, it's labor and sorrow. My God, that's such a short Praise time. God. But think of life eternal, forever. Yes. I have life eternal. Yes. I'm not going to get it. I have it. Have it. Right. You have it now. Yes. If you don't have it now, you won't get it out there somewhere. On, yes. Praise the name of the Lord. You're not going to get it out there somewhere. Yes. If you don't have it now, if you, you have it now yes. abiding in you. You're not going to wait and get over there yes. and resurrect from the dead and suddenly give you eternal life. No, you have eternal right life now. now. Yes, because Jesus is in us. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He said that. And he said that, right? And I believe that. I and I accept that. Amen. Praise God. I am the, though a man were dead, yes. yet if he liveth and believeth in me, he shall live yes. and never die. Yes. That's what I told a preacher that was trying to tell me this doctrine of the soul dying and going to the grave. Just like the ungodly man's soul does. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not me. I'm not the ungodly man. I, he, Jesus said, if a man, though a man were dead, yet if he live and believe in me, he shall live. He didn't tell me a lie. He didn't lie to us. He told us the truth. Yes, he did. He shall live and never die. Praise God. So how can the soul die of a righteous man? A righteous woman, then what 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 preeminence would I have over the ungodly man that lies in the grave like the sheep? Uh, no, without that soul living, uh, because he's the wages of sin. The wages of sin is death. Romans six thirty said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the gift of God, is life eternal. My God, my God, we're going to have a revival here tonight. If the glory of God comes in here. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe God can heal some sickness here tonight. I believe the Lord can heal some of us that are sick. Some of us that may be sick, may be ill. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen, amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise our God. Amen, amen. Jesus' name tonight. Name of Jesus. Oh, I believe the Lord is here among us. I know he is. Praise God. And he said to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, verse 23, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Scriptures are so real there. Praise the name of the Lord. So, uh, so I, I lost, I got uh, losing track of time, uh, but uh, okay. so uh, here, uh, all right, um, we've studied now the evening, the morning and the evening and the sacrifice. Um, and I don't believe we're always going to be divided. I'll talk sister in here. Uh, I know tonight uh, that we, we see a divided world of religion and men are writing books of all kinds, okay. and people are reading them, and they're believing a lot of stuff in those books, and those books are made only to sell. Right. Uh, they're not made of truth. That's uh, it. Did you know a lot of the books on the market now have little research in them? Right. They have a little prayer in them. They have little consecration in them. Right. But men are making books. Now to the money. internet they go, uh, going away from the book, the printed book, going to the internet, but much of it is without study, without research. It's just uh, made to sell. 
you know, put an attractive title to it uh, and, and sell it. But um, I believe God is going to have a group of people, a group of watchmen. Uh, look at the 52nd chapter of Isaiah. I'll just throw this in here. Uh, the 52nd chapter of Isaiah and verse 8, uh, I believe it is, where he said, uh, Thy watchman, yes. thy watchman, praise God, yeah, uh, said, uh, Thy watchman shall lift up the voice, the voice. That voice is the voice of Jesus Christ. With the voice together shall they sing. And I know what they're going to sing. They're going to sing the song of Moses, Moses and, and the Lamb. Praise God. That's the song they're going to sing. For they shall see. For they shall see. Didn't say everybody would see. Said the watchman. The watchman. Right. Every preacher is not a watchman. No. Every religious figure is not a watchman. Nope. They don't watch for your souls. Uh, but the true watchman, as Israel had true watchmen, they shall lift up the voice, not their voice. Uh, they, they, they're dead, their life hid with Christ and God. With the voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord, when the Lord, when the Lord shall bring again Amen. Zion. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's the city of God. That's the host of God. Uh, that's the burn offering of the evening sacrifice. Break forth into joy. Sing together, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord hath comforted his people. He hath redeemed Jerusalem. Amen. <laughs> he hath redeemed Jerusalem. Yes. Praise God. Glory. He said, let my right arm forget its cunning. If I forget Jerusalem. Let my tongue cleave to my mouth if I forget Jerusalem. Amen. Praise God. When that new Jerusalem walks in the streets of the old Jerusalem, there's going to be a millennial shout that will go for 1,000 years yes. as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords dwells there. When that new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, praise our God, matching countermatching the old Jerusalem, the holy city of God on the earth and the, in the time of Israel. And when they come together, as they do in the 14th chapter of Zechariah, uh, you see him coming, putting his feet on the Mount of Olives, and the impact is so great, it splits that mountain yes. into a valley. Praise God. My God, the impact of him touching the earth again Ooh. and coming again. Uh, just think of how that's going to be. And walking into Jerusalem and one third of the city is in captivity. Oh God, but as soon the prisoners are loosed and the bound go free because the king has come back to the earth again. Praise our God. Brother Marlowe, do you really believe you can be there? I know I can be there. I know I can be there. I, I don't plan to be in Philadelphia at that time. I plan to be in Jerusalem. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't plan to be in East Bradenton. I plan to be in Jerusalem when he comes in that 14th chapter. Praise our God. And you do too, Sister Jane. You do too. Brother Daniel, you can grab that shofar then and blow it with all of your mind. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. We were just talking this afternoon. We were sitting at home and we were talking. When we were in Israel at the wall. And the experience we had at the wall. I, I, I had about the same experience that she had on the other side, the women's side. And we had, we were not, we didn't know. We were just sitting out there and my feet and my knees were touching the wall and my forehead and my, my arms and my hands. And I felt and all I could do is cry right there. I cried for all that time that I was there. It was just amazing. 
And God, you know, he, he, he's so amazing. He, you know, oh, yes, he it, is. Amazing, amazing yeah. grace. And even when we were in Garden too, and I left, and all of a sudden I'm walking over there, and I hear somebody singing. I recognize the, the melody, but I didn't hear it. The language was different. And he said, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I had, I had an experience when we were at the wall, uh, Sister Marlo and I, and um, there was a, one of the uh, men studying for the um, priesthood of Israel. Uh, they, they were over in a school area. They were just a group of them over there. And I suppose the rabbi, the head rabbi was teaching them young, you can see they were young students. And uh, one, there was a one that came over close to me and uh, he was tucking a, a piece of paper into the wall. Uh, tucking a message into the wall. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, I said, uh, have you tucked Jesus into your heart? And uh, he, mm -hmm. he looked at me. <laughs> I said, I got the word out. I got it out. I didn't know what reaction I would get. But I can say I left Jerusalem that day knowing I had tucked the name Jesus right. into the heart of yeah. one That's of right. those uh, <coughs> young men that was studying for the priesthood. I said, have you taught Jesus? He was putting that paper and that message yeah. into the wall. Right. And as they do, right. as they do. Yes. And, and uh, right. I said, have you tucked Jesus into your heart? He looked at me. <laughs> I got, I, you know, sometimes you have to be bold for the Lord. Right. Just have to be bold and, and, and get a word in. I want to, I want, before we go, and it's getting time for the band to come in. Uh, and Sister Teresa's here and, and waiting for them. But in the 13th chapter of Zechariah, uh, see, this is the burnt sacrifice of the evening. This is the evening time. The scripture said, in the evening time, there shall be light. Yes. In the evening time. Yes. It's dark now. Yeah. We live in a very, very dark world. But My goodness. Did you, uh, I watched that man toss that infant baby out into the freeway uh, on the news. Um, a little toddler, he grabbed it in his arm, had it in his arm, yeah. walked up to a busy freeway no. and stood there and he threw the baby out oh. into the freeway. And fortunately, there was a woman that was uh, watching and she ran toward the baby and the baby was bruised and hurt, but spared. And she grabbed that baby and got him out of the freeway, the child, and that fellow ran. I thought, what a brute beast you are. Yes. We live in that kind of day. Amen. We live in that kind of day. Brother. We live in that kind of day. The church must become the light in the evening. Yes. In the evening time, there shall be light. And, and here uh, in the book of, uh, uh, Zechariah, uh, verse 1, uh, Zechariah 13. And this is concerning the coming of the Lord back to the earth. In yeah. that day, in that day, in that day, yes. don't forget the day. Yes. This is the day. That day is this day. Yes. That day is this day. In that day, yes. there shall be a fountain open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. Yes. There is no fountain on earth that will cleanse sin from any race of people, any group of people, except the fountain that is filled with his blood, Amen. drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Amen. Praise God. This shows that Christ will be there and that day he will once again return as he promised to Jerusalem and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness and it shall come to pass in that day saith the Lord of hosts that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land and there shall no more uh, be re they shall no more be remembered and also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. 
What a day that is going to be. Amen. We're contending with false prophets in the day we live in. We're contending with them. As, as he can, Michael uh, contended with the devil about the body of Moses. Uh, we're contending with false prophets in our day. But in that day, he's going to cut off the idols and the false prophets and the unclean spirit. Praise God, praise God. And, and then go over to the 14th chapter. And he said, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. Yeah. Verse 1. And thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Whatever man has accumulated, the spoil of man, the riches of men, will be divided in the midst of the nations, be destroyed, be, be put asunder. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Uh, take this verse when you go home or you're studying the scriptures and take the third chapter of Joel yes. and link the third chapter of Joel multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the Lord cometh in the valley of decision. Link that right with this verse right here. All nations against Jerusalem to battle and the city shall be taken and the houses rifled or torn asunder, and the women assaulted, ravished, uh, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people, remains of the people, shall not be cut off from the city. There'll still be half the city that will be going and coming. Half the city will be under the dominion of Russia, um, yes. Syria, uh, these nations that have long wanted to devour Israel, uh, the Palestinians, um, uh, the, the Jordan, all the Saudi, the Saudis around them, um, half the city, because all the nations will be gathered in the valley of Jehoshaphat, and be gathered there, yes. and and the Gentiles will proclaim war, and wake up the mighty men and say, wake up the mighty men. Yeah. And the weak will say they're strong. Oh. Yeah. Those little nations over there now, they know they're weak, they know they can't contend, but they want Israel. <coughs> Their hunger is to take Israel, mm -hmm. devour Israel. But in that time, when half the city is now in captivity, verse three, then shall the Lord yes. go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Yes. And his feet shall stand in that day yes. upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. Yes. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the mist, yes. thereof toward the east and toward the west. Yes. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, half of it toward the south. God's going to split that mountain apart with the impact of his presence. And you shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Yea, you shall flee like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come. Yes. And all the saints with, with thee. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear in the dark. How could it be with a mountain splitting apart and with the coming of the Lord and with the nations clashing? How could you discern hardly daylight or dark? But the scripture says, but it shall be one day. <laughs> oh, thank you, God. I'm glad I know that day. Be one day which shall be known to the Lord. Yes. Not day nor night, no. Seven days are past. Praise God. Mm -hmm. It's the eighth day. Yes. It's the day of the circumcision. It's the day of the cutting of the foreskin. Praise God. Oh, Hallelujah. 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 I believe he's saying there that's the last day of the seventh. That's the tribulation. That's the last day. That's the great tribulation. Coming upon the earth. When, whenever he, he comes back, when it's still, uh, uh, be light 
This is his open coming. He was explaining that verse, I believe, when when Moses was in in a battle, and uh, when he says he left it, it was a day and a night they had to fight a battle to get out of there. That's right. So he's gonna he's gonna let. I don't know how he's gonna connect the moon and the sun where it'll be kind of half night, half day, uh, but. But when he comes down with the saints of God, that's where he, his battle begun. He controls the heavens, doesn't he? And, uh, he controls the earth. He takes over, then he sets his feet on the mount. Glory to God. Praise God. Yeah. Oh, my, my, my. But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord. God knows his day. He knows his day. Man may not know it, but God knows it. Praise God. Not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. Yeah. Who's that light going to be? Jesus. Christ is the light. In him was life, and that life is the light of men. And when he walks, the candle power that John saw in the book of Revelation right. shining as the sun. Right. You won't need FPL anywhere around. No, no. Praise our God. Amen. You won't need FPL anywhere around or peace of valley. And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go up from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea, half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and winter it shall it be. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day there shall be one Lord and his name was. And everybody said, Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Amen. I'm getting ready for it. Read the 10th and 11th verse. And Sister Marla wants the 10th and 11th verse. Right? And the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Remen, south of Jerusalem. And it shall be lifted up and inhabitants in her place from Benjamin's gate under the place of the first gate, yes. under the corner gate, oh. from the tower of Hamel, under the king's wine yes. and men shall dwell in it, yes. and there shall be no more utter destruction, yes. but Jerusalem yes. shall be safely yes. inhabited. Yes. Praise the name. Yes. We've got a reason to praise the Lord. Yes. We've got a reason to live yes. for the Lord. Yes. We've got a reason to do what God is telling us to do. Yes. Be Praise faithful yes. to what the Holy Ghost right. is telling you right Praise now. God. Do not shirk. Do not back up. <laughs> Don't look around. Don't let somebody discourage you. Right. Be faithful to what the Holy Ghost is saying to you right Praise now. God. Praise God. I love him tonight. I praise him. I give him the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Let's lift our hands and give the Lord a wave offering, a heave offering. Let's heave the Lord an offering. Let's wave the Lord an offering of the breast and the shoulder. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, I love you tonight. I praise you, Lord. I give you the glory. I know that the day is here. I know that you're coming. I know these scriptures are real. I know we have revelation. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee. Hallelujah, who can tell what God can do? can tell of his love for you in the name of Jesus Jesus we have the victory one more time in the name of Jesus 
Thank you for the land. Oh, may God bless you. Leave this place with victory. Yes. Supercharged.